Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for this opportunity and for this invitation to CCBE and to European Lawyers Foundation. Uh, when I received that invitation, I had no doubts. I uh, accepted it right away, not only because I also like the physical meetings and, and, I, and that I missed them for uh, almost two years, but let me tell you, as a rapporteur and as a shadow rapporteur on the AI Act, I have had so many meetings, like more than 150. But I remember these exact meetings with you guys because this was probably the only time when we spoke about the ethical uh, issues, about the about the same concerns, because James, I might be a representative, from, representative of a different generation, but I share absolutely the same concerns. So, uh, so that's why I'm really happy to be here, because I think that we are on the same side. Uh, and allow me, I have prepared a report uh, in which, of course, I will, first I will make some general remarks from my personal my previous experience in the, this uh, own initiative report concerning the artificial intelligence in the law enforcement and justice, but also as a current shadow on the AI Act, and maybe to share some of the, the biggest concerns that uh, we are all having. But allow me also to say we are not against the innovation. We are not against uh, the artificial intelligence, but I don't think that there is any artificial thing that can replace the, the human touch. So. Uh, well, the idea that the artificial intelligence can be of substantial use in the field of law enforcement and crimi criminal justice is not new and has been broadly accepted across the EU. It trends uh, towards using automated processing techniques and algorithms in crime prevention and the criminal justice systems has been generally growing for already a number of years. And this usage, however, is not without an impact on people's fundamental rights recognized as such in the EU. In fact, it could be extremely high risk. Too often, in my opinion, the discussion of AI in Europe focuses on its effects on the single market, on innovation and competition, especially uh, with this constant race between uh, China and the USA. As the main rapporteur of the own initiative report of the European Parliament on artificial intelligence in criminal law and its use by the police and judicial authorities in criminal matters, I was intrigued and frankly a bit scared when I examined the topics in depth. AI is not just another product that we have to regulate in the EU. It's not a car, it's not an insurance service. It can be deeply flawed just like humans and even if it works as designed, it could still unfortunately to discrimination, marginalization of certain categories of people, and ultimately to sheer uh, injustice. One example of uh, usage of AI in the law enforcement area is so-called predictive policing, based on the claim that through algorithm processing of data sets, it is possible to reveal patterns of, patterns of probable future offending and victimization, which can thus be interdicted before they happen. Predictive policing method can be di uh, divided into four broad categories. First, uh, methods aiming at pre predicting crimes, uh, methods aiming at predicting offenders, methods aiming at predicting perpetrators' uh, identities or creating profiles similar to those of past offenders, and methods aiming at predicting victims of crimes used to identify a group of individuals who are likely to become victims of crime. What is concerning is the fact that the inclusion of algorithmic variables such as criminal history and family background can make the past behavior of certain group determine the fate of an individual who is nevertheless a unique human being with a specific social background, education, skills, degree of guilt, and old motivations. This could lead to a creation of echo chambers within which pre-existing prejudice may be further cemented. Researchers have shown how some systems used notably in the US, US are built on data produced during periods of flawed, racially biased, and even unlawful practices and policies. Predictive policing relying on historical data risk fueling a cycle of distorted enforcement. As underlined by criminolo criminologists, crime reports and uh, statistics gathered by the police are partly a record of law enforcement response to what happens in the community and not necessarily an accurate record of all the crimes that occurs in said community. Even predictive policing systems which do not appear to use any personal data can have a negative impact. 
For instance, location-related risk prognosis can lead to ex uh, excessive police checks in certain neighborhoods identified at hotspots and therefore to the ethnics of social profiling of population groups living there. And I can just show you an example because I had this meeting several months ago with the uh, with the lady whose son became a victim of such constant checks, only because he is black, only because he is a parent of a single mother, only because he lives in the uh, bad reputation neighborhood, he is checked many more times by the police, only because of that. And then, if you, when he goes to find uh, to look for a job, then the uh, the employer looks at his files and says, "You have had so many." checks, obviously there is something wrong with this guy, I'm not going to hire him. So this is basically how it works and how biased thing can affect the whole destiny of a person who is innocent. This is why the EP stated clearly in its uh, report from October last year that all AI solutions for law enforcement and the judiciary need to fully respect the principle of human dignity, non-discrimination, freedom of movement, the presumption of innocence, and the right of defense, including the right to silence, freedom of expression and information, freedom of assembly and of association, equality before the law, the principle of equality of arms and the rights to an effective remedy and a fair trial in accordance with the Charter and the European Convention on Human Rights. Any AI tools either developed or used by law enforcement or uh, the judiciary should as a minimum be safe, robust, secure and fit for purpose, respect the principles of fairness, data minimization, accountability, transparency, non-discrimination and explainability. Their development, deployment, and use should be subject to risk assessment and strict necessity and uh, proportionality testing, where safeguards need to be proportionate to the identified risks. And there is a certain pow power asymmetry between those who employ AR technologies and those who are subject to them. Therefore, it's imperative that the use of AI tools by law enforcement and judicial authorities does not become a factor of inequality, social fracture, and, or exclusion. The use of AI may uh, have a serious impact on the defense right of suspects, given the difficulty in obtaining meaningful information of their functioning and the consequent difficulty in challenging their results in court, in particular by individuals under investigation. We also highlighted the potentially grave adverse consequences when individuals overly trust the seemingly objective and scientific nature of AI tools and fail to consider the possibility of their results being incorrect, incomplete, irrelevant, or discriminatory. Over-reliance on, uh, on the results provided by AI systems should be avoided, and we need to build confidence and knowledge to questions or override an algorithmic recommendation. We should have realistic expectations on such technological solutions and not to promise perfect law enforcement solutions and detection of all offense committed. The decision giving legal or, or similar effect always needs to be taken by a human who can be held accountable for the decision made. People subject to AI powered systems must have uh, recourse to remedy, in fact, uh, under EU law, a person has the right not to be subjected to a decision which produces legal effects concerning them or significantly affects them and it's uh, based solely on the automated data processing. For this reason, we call for a ban on the use of the um, AI and related technology for uh, proposing, uh, let me see whether I have not mistaken it. No, I haven't. Uh, uh, the judicial decision, mm. of course, which is a ban of missing from the current commission proposal AI regulation. The EP also called for compulsory fundamental rights impact assessment to be conducted prior to implication or, or deployment of any AI systems for law enforcement of the judiciary in order to assess any potential risk to fundamental rights. As the expert committee on human rights uh, dimensions of automated data processing and different forms of AI at the Council of Europe has noted, algorithmic decision-making systems that rely on data-driven profiling techniques may threaten several human rights, including the rights to a fair trial and the due process, the rights to freedom of expression and information, the right to protection against discrimination in the exercise of rights and freedoms, and the right 
to privacy and data protection. Another quite controversial type of AI is uh, the facial recognition technology, which allows for the automated identification or authentication of an individual by matching facial features from two or more digital images. The technology too often produces results demonstrating clear bias based on ethnic, racial, gender, and other human uh, characteristics. There are, of course, different types of uh, facial recognition, such as, but not limited to, verification, authentication, uh, matching a live face to a photo in an ID document or smart borders, identification, matching a photo against a set of database of photos, and detection, uh, detecting faces in real time from sources such as CCTV footage and matching them uh, to database, which is basically a real time surveillance. Each of which carry different implications for the enforcement should be limited to clear, uh, sorry, different implication for the protection of fundamental rights. The deployment of facial recognition systems by law enforcement should be limited to clearly warranted purposes in full respect of the principle of proportionality and necessity and the applicable law. As a minimum, the use of facial recognition technology must comply with the requ requirements of data minimization, data accuracy, storage limitation, data security and accountability, as well as being lawful, fair, and transparent, and following a specific explicit and legitimate purposes that is clearly defined in the member states or union law. There are, I would say, plenty of examples of unsuccessful attempts to use the face, uh, face recognition technologies. For instance, a face recognition system installed at Belgium's Brussels airport, so-called E-Gates, was scrapped in 2020 due to persistence errors and inefficiency. The E-Gates required more stuff than uh, conventional checks. Face recognition applications have been constantly shown to be less accurate for certain people, such as women and people with darker skin tones. A 2019 research reports by the US National Institute of Standards and Technology tested 189 facial recognition algorithms and concluded that the most of them exhibited bias. A 2020 survey of the literature on algorithms bias on the context of biometrics found that the demographic factors can have a large influence on various biometric algorithms and that current algorithms tend to, ex uh, to exhibit some degree of bias with respect to certain demographic groups. The accuracy of uh, face recognition technology is highly dependent on the quality of the images, including images captured during the collection of biometrics and images used to train AI algorithms, so-called training data set. During enrollment, poor quality images taken at e-gates or through a CCTV camera under variable environmental conditions may result in less accurate results, as in the case uh, of automated fingerprints identification changes in a person's physical characteristics over time may also affect the accuracy of ER uh, FRT. For example, changes in the facial shape of a child also have an impact on the reliability of a match. Recent research has found a considerable degradation of performance for face recognition algorithms in, on children as compared to the performance obtained on adults. There are serious concerns about the scientific basis of AI systems aiming to detect emotions from uh, facial expressions. But I'll probably stop to here and try to come to the current proposal for a regulation on AI on which uh, I've been working right now. And I'm highly skeptical on the added value of usage of polygraphs or other AI tools that detect the emotional state of a person. There is simply not enough scientific evidence that this actually work. They also affect disproportionately vulnerable people. If you are simply nervous, scared to fly, scared to be questioned at, an, uh, at the border or have some neurological conditions that makes you twitch or affect your uh, involuntary movements, you will be targeted by such software at the airport. I believe such unscientific practices relying on the idea that a matching can never be wrong should be directly banned under Article 5. And this also a suggestion coming from the EDPB and EDPS. Uh, other ways I believe we should strengthen Article 5 right now, there is no mention of the harms of practices like predictive policing, which has demonstrated evidence of disproportionate transgression on the fundamental rights of non 
to non-discrimination, the presumption of innocence, uh, or child rights. Uh, the proposal prohibits social scoring when performed over a certain period of time or by public authorities on, uh, or on their behalf. However, to me, private companies such, such as social media and cloud service providers also can process vast amounts of personal data and conduct social scoring. And I believe that we should look more into this and the future AI regulation should actually prohibit any type of social scoring by any actor given the great risk of discrimination which has been recognized by multiple uh, civil society organizations and the EDPS and EDPB. Then, uh, as Article 5 deals with the prohibition of real-time remote biometric identification systems in publicly accessible spaces by law enforcement authorities, it also leaves the door wide open for, excep for exceptions such as the prevention of specific substantial and imminent threat to the life or physical safety of, of natural persons or uh, of a terrorist attack. Such an exception seems so, I would say, quite vague to me with possibilities for very wide interpretation by the authorities. As private entities are excluded from the scope of this article and I have asked the commission on the reason of, for that. And it seems logical to me that mass gathering of biometric data should be prohibited to both public and private actors. The answer was quite, was that the private actors already fall within the scope of the GDPR. However, I think that we should use then the occasion even to strengthen such provisions and to include the usage by private actors within the scope of Article 5. Then there is a loophole for ex post use of biometric identification, which I failed to see how it would be a benefit to citizens' rights. If we agree the practice is harmful, then basically it doesn't matter when it occurs. Last uh, but not least, such use of AI involves processing of data of an indiscriminative and disproportionate number of data subjects for the identification of only a few individuals. Not to mention that there does not seem to be enough evidence that this actually works and truly contributes to security as some law enforcement authorities claim. What are the safeguards for the fundamental rights of all the people the, that end up under surveillance? Don't they need to be informed about that or how, they, how are they going to avail of uh, their rights to object to it or their rights to redress? Frankly, I haven't seen enough data to convince me that we are actually gaining anything as, social, as a society uh, with such a practice. And maybe one of the biggest challenges in the AI Act is uh, how to make this regulation future-proof. It will be years before it enters into force. We have lengthy legislative process in front of us, and then two years uh, before the adopted act enter, enters into force. So we are speaking about probably 2026 when uh, this regulation enter, enters into force. So in my opinion, that we should look for, uh, for ways to put more flexibility in terms of adapting the risk categories. Something that we consider today a low risk um, AI can reveal actually to be a high risk uh, or even unacceptable in a couple of years. And the, con and the opposite, of course. The commission has suggested using delegated acts to amend Annex 3, which is the high risk uh, systems, but only within the eight headlines defining possible areas, which means that it cannot identify new areas uh, where AI might prove to be high risk in the future. I think we should look for ways to be more creative and look for other options. First, because this is a new technology, we don't know how it will evolve in, and second, we cannot rely on the commission's goodwill in such situation, uh, when such situation arises. And another challenge uh, is how to ensure that people have the right to redress, the right to complain if they feel uh, their rights are being breached. Because we have always talked about the, who bears the responsibility, either the provider or the developer, but we very often forget the, um, the role of those who are subject of the AI. And the Commission's proposal talks a lot about providers and uh, also uh, the users, but does not mention the subject of AI systems. People like you, like me, who might be profiled by AI, whose data will be examined by the AI. 
Uh, we are presented very often with this false division, and I'm concluding here. We have to choose between innovation and fundamental rights. We cannot have both. Uh, the more you go with one, the less, the more you lose uh, the other. But I really don't think that this is the case. We must foster innovation uh, that is compatible with the fundamental rights. Just because cars can run at, with 250 kilometers per hour has not stopped regu uh, regulators from imposing driving speed limits for reasons of public safety. This is this I read somewhere. In other words, just because some technologies are, technologies are possible, it doesn't mean that uh, they should be accepted. Uh, and like I said, I would like to underline, I'm, I'm not against the innovation, but we need to be extremely careful how and where and in what circumstances we use such technologies. Thank you very much, and sorry for being so long, and hopefully not too boring. Thank you.